Now, if someone comes in and they just blew out their knee skiing, I'm not going to make them do a deep squat because they won't be able to. If they've got a big effusion, you have to take out some of these special tests because you're probably already thinking, I'm probably going to get an MRI. I just want to like see what's going on with their ligaments. So you fine tune this, of course, which I have to remind the residents. <laughs> you fine tune this. You're not just going down a checklist because otherwise the patient's going to complain that you did something or made them do something that was not, a, not very comfortable. So Derek comes in. I'm thinking about a meniscus tear. I want to do a deep squat test and a duck walk test if he can bend that much. So squat down. Okay, so as he rises up from a deep squat, I want to ask him, do you have pain anywhere? If it's in the front, it could just be patellofemoral, but if he says, you know, it hurts like right on the inside of my knee, on the medial joint line, or maybe the lateral joint line, I'm thinking, well, maybe it could be meniscus. Um, you want to do a duck walk. So a duck walk is just basically a, an active squat. You're just having the patient walk across the floor. But you notice a lot of these tests are designed for compression and maybe a little bit of twisting to see if we can bring out the meniscus tear symptoms. <clears throat> and then the last test standing is a Thessaly's test. Let me see, I already did it. I was gonna, okay. I was gonna scroll through these so you guys could see. It's our PA doing the squat, she's laughing. Okay. Thessaly's test with Christina. So stand. You don't have the patient bend too much, and you have them bend, you just have them bend maybe 20, 30 degrees, and you have them rotate. A lot of people can't do this. Uh, um, they twist, like do the bad one where they tw twist through your hip. Yeah. People twist through their hip, and that's really not do doing nothing to, the, to the compress the knee and twist it. So, um, so then if they can't do it, and you ask them like three times, so like, you gotta probably work on this yourself so you can demonstrate to the patient and see how bad your core stability is, because it also tests, it definitely tests core stability. Um, again, you don't wanna do this if patient has really poor motion, because they will not like you, because do, in order to do a good quality exam on a McMurray's test, you really need to flex the patient up. I see too many times people kinda doing it here, and you're not getting good compression of the meniscus, I mean, most of these tests, again, are designed to give deep flexion and compression to bring out the meniscus symptoms. So you want to bend the knee up, get your fingers on the joint line so you can see if you can feel a click. And you want to try to flex, except for some people are super muscular and you can't. You want to <laughs> try to flex up past 90 degrees of hip flexion. And then you're rotating and also varicing this way. And then I'll bring it out this way, into, in, and I'm valgus and rotating. I'm going to do this on the screen. There. So there's a varus and a twisting motion. And if you're not sure, if you're not getting any symptoms, and you're pretty sure that's what the patient has, you can always re repeat, because you're trying to catch a meniscus fragment. This and this. So there's like a pendulum and also a twisting type of motion. So if a patient has pain, when I do this on the medial side, you you're compressing the meniscus and you're kind of torquing on it, you think medial meniscus tear. If patient has pain when you do it this way, then you think, on the medial side, you think MCL. Conversely, patient has pain on the lateral side when you do this, probably IT band because you're really stretching it. Um, patient has so a patient has pain on the lateral side when you do this, um, then you're compressing the meniscus and it might be a lateral meniscus tear. So you gotta think about what you're doing and where the pain is to kind of come to the diagnosis. The last test that you can do supine is a pivot shift test, which is very hard to get people to relax for in the office. It's even hard for us to do if they have any pain or if they're fearing what you're gonna do. It doesn't really hurt, but patients just have a hard time relaxing their quads and their hamstrings. It's, um, it's highly specific, though, if the patient has a pivot shift compared to the opposite side. And as I was mentioning before, if the ACL is torn, the tibia sits forward, um, and as you bend the knee up to about 30 degrees, your, the patient's iliotibial band tightens and reduces the tibia to the normal orientation of the femur. If the, if the ACL is intact, there's not going to be that shift. So what you're trying to do, though, is even Derek's having trouble <laughs> relaxing. The, uh, you're trying to get the patient to relax their quad and hamstrings. There's a lot of different ways to do this, but usually you abduct the leg, and I tend to load the knee, and then I try to rotate and apply a little bit of valgus um, as I'm doing this. And about here, the IT band tightens up, and if someone's ACL is torn, the, the tibia shifts back, like in this patient here. 
this is very, you can see this. A lot of times you don't even see the shift, you just feel it when you're doing the exam. But this guy had a little bit of medial collateral ligament laxity, so it's much more obvious. So.